today we're going to train a face classifier which can tell us whether a face is yours or not and the interesting point about that is we're going to collect the data set ourselves and then write the code to train the model so keep watching because this is the first video when we are going to actually write the code Whee! hi everybody i'm puya parsa and in this video we're going to train a face classifier also i think data sets if you haven't heard the term data set or the terminology around that or even you don't know what is ai or machine learning please head over to the first video i made for this basic concept but for collecting data set we're using a tool by google which is teachable machine with google.com and also the link is down in the description in case of you um you're lazy like me and don't want to type it that's a shame but anyway it's a great tool for collecting data sets with your webcam and uh, instead of talking like that let's head over to the website take a look at it and see what it's look like we're gonna go ahead and click image projects and here we can define our classes class one which is myself we can turn on the webcam and capture data uh, now we've get familiar with the tool but what about the dataset itself? I'm going to train the classifier on the two classes. The first class is myself. And for the second class, a friend of mine is helping me today. And he's now in back of the camera and I want to invite him to come in front of camera. Hello, Mr. Heji. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you for being with us and helping us today. So here is Miss Mr. Hechi and he is going to help us today. Okay, that was always fun. <laughs> but warning, collecting data sets was always the most boring part and hope Mr. Hechi can help us with that. You have to be very careful with these things, guys. It's not a joke. That was an awesome data set collecting. And I know Mr. Hedge is a busy person and I want to thank you at first and it was such a kind of you to be here today. Thank you. But before starting to code, I want to say that what is common as coding environment in deep learning is Jupyter. For those of you who haven't heard the Jupyter is an environment where you can write your code in cells and run them cell, cell by cell. That is the environment that almost in every course, whether online or not, is asked you to install on your machine in the very first session. And we want to use an online service which has no painful installation. Hopefully, again, Google uh, has brought us with a service called Colab in that you have access to a free Linux system where you can run your Python code and also have access to a free GPU. It doesn't seem such a big deal right now, but it gets more important as you're training more complex datasets. 
Just notice that this implementation has lots of details. Make sure that each cell is meaningful to you and in case of any problem, leave a comment below and I answer comment ASAP. Let's start. So, okay, here is the code and I just want to mention that I made a, a third class which was a test class and I reduce it to 10 sample images but if you can make it um, to if you make it up to 12 it may be um, better for our code you you could see later why I'm saying that but here is the code and the code is uh, self-explanatory itself but we are going to say what each cell is exactly doing uh, the first of things that this code is available to you and you can click in the description below but this is the code lab environment that I mentioned and we first have to download these uh, data set, these samples that we made we can download them here and I already downloaded them and then you can upload them here depending on your internet speed it may take a little while make video faster to skip this part okay that's done uh, this output here because I already kind of run the code and these are output from the last run and I delete that okay uh, we first install the unzip package of the Linux and we unzip the file downloaded from the teachable machine okay that's another process that we have to wait to unzip and I just put all the images of Mr. Hedgy inside the Hedgy folder here and all of the images of myself inside the um, let's refresh that inside the uh, Puya folder here and then we uh, extract the tests um, zip file and it's I just reduced as I said to you earlier I just reduced it to 10 files so we have all the images right now and we can import TensorFlow as TF uh, because I use TensorFlow as back end and we have access to cross as it's as kind of interface and the underlying level is TensorFlow but you are working with cross and NumPy which is always imported in any machine learning program Pillow is a popular library from Python where you can work with images and matplotlib.pyplot uh, which used to plot things and glob for working with files so I made categories here these are just uh, co codes that you can go through them I just want to mention the main parts uh, the main uh, procedure is uh, we are going to convert files to grayscale it means we lost the colors and then go through them and kind of convert them to the array uh, format so I just um, made um, an array of the size of my data set another uh, important point is I resize all the images to 16 by 16 this is my um, input this is my labels that I'm going to create that that isn't so hard so I go through the categories I go through the images and convert them to this L uh, stands for grayscale and resize them reshaping for uh, some clarity and for those uh, for those images I, I know that from a Puya folder I uh, make label equals one or otherwise it stays zero and go through the all the images and categories so in this uh, levy plot, uh, one of the images here in the um, color map gray and save uh, the label, we can see here is um, uh, an, an image of Mr. Hedgy with the label associated with image. You can see that the first 
uh, cell of this array is one representing that this is a picture of Mr. Hedge and here is the most confusing and the most um, brand new one to you which I, I use a lot of uh, you, you know a lot of things in advance like activation softmax or um, activation relu but you may not know what is a con 2d which uh, is a, a different type of network rather than vanilla network that is great when you're working with images and I'm going to cover that in a future video but this is too much for a video to cover that so then I uh, put stochastic gradient descent I use MSE as my loss function and just this this is not important batch size for now epochs is 100 X is my images labels of are my labels and just put and just fit the label and it may take a white cell and you could see that the loss that is um, the difference between the prediction and the and the actual label is going and is reducing as the model lens and you could see that uh, it was 0 0.13 at first and it goes much lower than than to the power of negative 4 so we are doing something good here because because loss indication of is, is model learning something or not and then it this cell is just for prediction of an image you can just skip that and this cell is for testing uh, the performance of the model you've learned you can use your test images you know the, t the test images are not as uh, seen by the model so uh, model um, hasn't seen them before so it's a real challenge for uh, these model to recognize that one um, uh, stands for recognizing me and zero stands for Mr. Hedgy and let plot this cell does the job and get prediction but this cell here represent what was the result so one means it is recognized uh, me and zero it uh, means that the model recognized this picture as Mr. Hedgy so right 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 answer right answer right answer right answer right answer right 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 but yeah uh, this is 100 percent accuracy but uh this i think i i think that's really cool to happen here because that's an example of overfitting when uh, your model is so simple but the result is dramatically um, awesome so uh, I think uh, it is really good to have it here and notice that the expected accuracy of mine was about 80% uh, but um, here we have 100% accuracy for uh, in testing absolutely but that's not a good sign but I think that's the title of a future video so this is the code and uh, notice that I, I just uh, didn't go into a lot of details so feel free to ask me in the comments about which part do you think is uh, a little vague or which part is uh, you think can be done better on any other comments don't hesitate to comment me thank you okay good job if you notice I've used something different than vanilla neural network which we had in previous videos I use convolution neural network which shows a really good performance with images for the details of how they work and what are they I think uh, that's the title of another video but uh, thanks for watching this video don't forget to subscribe and hit the like if you'd like it